market's very, very competitive right now with the uh, cable companies, the wireless companies, and the fixed telco providers all competing for the same customer groups. Um, it's uh, really about coming up with a differentiated set of offerings to bring together a singular experience across all those services to really meet the customer's needs. It's just such an exciting time in terms of you know the, the digital revolution, the digital renaissance, and nowhere is it more true in the kind of the part of the business that I work in, which is you know delivering TV services. And you know, there's a lot of talk about cord cutting and the end of the pay TV model, but we see it as an explosion. It's more video consumption in the home than ever, and it is what's driving networks. It's driving services, and we still think that we have a great opportunity to dif differentiate how we're delivering video services to our customers. Whether or not it's traditional pay TV or whether it's new OTT services, we think that there's um, a big opportunity to do both going forward, and it's going to sustain these markets for a long time. I think uh, we are now facing a very exciting uh, market landscape, not only because of uh, all the uh, movements we are seeing among the, the players, but also because of the changes we are having in the, in the value chain, given the new ways of distributing video. So for, from an operator's standpoint, we need to gain size, scale, so we can have the best possible coverage, both in terms of fixed and mobile, broadband, which is our key asset to, to bring to the table. So I think we are living in a very exciting times. We've been expecting that consolidation since, I mean, since the 90s, actually. And uh, uh, there has been a slow consolidation happening, but uh, what, what I'm seeing is really an acceleration of that consolidation. Uh, everything we've talked 20 years ago now is happening. So, um, so it's not neither bad or, or good, but it's really happening. And uh, big companies that were leaders in their fields 20 years ago, uh, we're seeing that there, some of them are being bought. And um, it's a totally new landscape uh, forming. Massive changes in the market at the moment. And uh, the challenge for Spark is, how do we learn from some of those changes that are going on in the market, and how do we make the most of what those market changes are doing to, uh, uh, to provide better services to our customers? I think in terms of the vendors and, and the partners, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of new players entering the market, um, a lot of startups, um, a lot of companies coming from the internet world to play in the broadcast space. Um, we're seeing a lot of also consolidation amongst traditional players and, and traditional players acquiring new startups. Um, it's hard to kind of keep track of all the different players. I interpret as going to have another phase as, as technology creates evolves via disruptions. We had a, a disruption that created new processing power and new set-top boxes that did all this marvelous HD and so on. Now the technology is being consolidated uh, and solidified. The, the industry consolidates to increase efficiency and then start waiting for the next revolution. And for those of you that believe this is it, uh, I, we are old enough to know that uh, there's another one coming and coming soon. The current market landscape is very open at this point in time. We're seeing a big interest in smart cities, smart content, video camera. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest in smart stadiums. So we're seeing that the Internet of Things is really growing and we have an opportunity to service the public with many different opportunities for traffic management, uh, water, and uh, just basically an improvement in their way of life. Two key challenges that I, I think that we, we have some good ideas you know, and, and have seen that Technicolor is advancing on with other partners is how we actually bring a uh, TV service to market that looks like OTT, it feels like OTT, but it's actually still a paid TV service. We think there's a really good opportunity to put those two together. So things like offering your traditional broadcast content, depending on your market, sometimes that's the only place that you can get it, but you, a lot of people have cut the cord already and they want that content. Flip side, we know almost everybody 
they want to get that OTT content in one place in a user experience that is as easy as possible. And that's why we think as an operator and with partners like Technicolor, we still have the opportunity to be a video service provider and not just be an internet pipe. Well, to us, is, um, it's really that um, we're used to have a couple of competitors, basically, that was easy to follow and, uh, and, and it was good to have some competition. Now we're, what we're seeing is that by consolidating, um, we're in a kind of a void in terms of having major competitors. In, in some cases, we're ending up with a single vendor or two, two, two vendors. So it's like, it, it creates an issue for us. On the video side, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the video specifically, uh, as an operator, we're getting less and less margins out of video. So it's, it's, it's tougher, tougher to make a business case selling video. So we need to, uh, and at the same time, we need to invest into new IPTV uh, guides and, and way to, to, to deliver video. So it requires a lot of investment and we're making less and less margin. So we need to be very, very conscious of where we put our money. So that's, that's, an, that's an issue for us. The big question for the market today is what's going to be the video and entertainment industry tomorrow, right? What is it that's going to add? Is the high dynamic range? It is a bigger TV, a flex, flexible screen, is it mobile? But the industry has to find what's the value proposition to the consumers to uh, enable uh, to, to guide the engineering teams to, towards what the what is the next the leap? Bring it together so it's a seamless of services and experiences for the customer. Bring together uh, video, voice, data, and wireless experiences. First key challenge I think is keeping up, and you know uh, we've the pace of change is is so much faster, and we need to be able to respond a lot more quickly than we have in the past. Like we can't take two years to deliver a new set-top box product. <laughs> we need to be making improvements, enhancements, monthly if not weekly, <laughs> in terms of you know, improving the customer experience. And that might be small things, but it could be also new features. And um, so the first key challenge is, um, is agility. Um, and I think linked to that is capability. We don't have all the capabilities in New Zealand, again, we're a small player, um, and so uh, the challenge is finding the right partner, uh, partners who can actually help us um, bring together new solutions, get us to market quickly. Two major challenges for us at Spark at the moment are, uh, as the needs of our customers and the connectivity in their lives starts to accelerate, how do we provide better connectivity and more reliable connectivity to our customers? Uh, that's the one. That's one of our key challenges for us. And the second challenge for us is how do we stand out from the crowd when all of the other RSPs are trying to say, well, solve those same issues? How does Spark stand out against its competitors in the marketplace? The biggest challenge is coming up with a, a platform that would have the capability of bringing in multiple services, multiple areas of interest, and yet have a similar uh, template that we could use with all of them to be able to make it more efficient and make it prevalent for the companies that we're working for and with, and the cities, to have a single user experience, an opportunity for applications that would be very common and easy to use. So that would be the first complex. The second thing that I see is getting the interactivity, uh, the compatibility of the different things. We see so many different uh, ideas and things that are being produced uh, out in the uh, public, what you see, at, like, for example, at CES, we see all this different equipment, but I don't think we have the compatibil compatibility issue down yet. Our two main challenges right now are twofold. First is how to deliver a non-linear video experience, uh, both in terms of quality, in terms of content reach, and user uh, interface and usability so we make sure we have the best uh, user experience in the marketplace the second one is to do so over a very low bandwidth so for us uh, video video compression it's key it's a key technology 
and how to deliver that through uh, low, low speeds, given that we are a continental operator in Brazil. We serve from north to south of Brazil and we have very different land bandwidth situations. So that will be our two main challenges.